Welcome everybody to our Green Acres. I'm going to show y'all a really easy and fun project to make. For Valentine's Day or if you want to make it more for Easter and spring, you can also do that. But we're going to take a pack of this 24-piece little mini canvases. They're 4 by 6 and they have a great deal on these in my Amazon store, so I will have these linked. Along with the little canvases, you will need some decoupage paper. And I'm going to use these and it has four graphics on it. I've already used one on a previous project, but I'm going to, I still have three, so I'm going to use those. If you don't want to theme these as Valentine's, here's another beautiful sheet of decoupage paper that will be great to carry us through Easter and springtime. I'm going to leave a link to these decoupage papers down below. But all you want to do, since the decoupage paper squares do not fit exactly on the 4x6 mini canvases, I'm just going to take my fingers and a little bit of water, go around all the edges, and just gently tear it and rip it. I'm just trying to make it look like it has got a torn look, just so it looks like it's not intentionally cut. So once I got it sized down to the size of a little mini canvas, I'm going to use DIY liquid patina and I'm going to apply it in sections. Always do one, one half and then I get it laid down really good, go over it with my sponge brush across the top, seal it down really well and let it dry. And then I'm just going to work on the other two, get those on the little mini canvases. And there are so many different things that you can do with these after you get these made. And I'm going to give you different ideas throughout the video on, on a few things that we we can do to them and how you can display them and also how fun it is and some creative ways of how you can embellish these. Once I have all of my canvases finished, I set them up and I let them dry. Once they are dry, I'm going to go around with a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to sand off all the excess paper around the edges. This will give us a nice clean edge and that way it'll get rid of the excess paper. Now I want y'all to see Tater is coming around. She thinks I need some help with this project and you know I always do. Now I'm going to take these little love little wood cutouts. I got some that I got at Dollar Tree but I found these on Amazon. You get 30 pieces and y'all they are less than eight dollars so I'll make sure to have these linked down below. Now I'm taking some rub and buff and I also have this in my Amazon store and if you don't have this product I highly recommend it. I've been using this tube for over two years. It takes just a little bit of this product. It goes a long way, but you get great results. Oh my goodness, y'all. Did y'all see Tater bringing that sweater over where she wanted to lay on it? That was cracking me up. Anyway, I'm going to get out my air dry clay and now I'm going to make some little clay molds. And the first thing you want to do is just rub some uh, cornstarch in your mold and that will prevent your clay from sticking. They'll remove a lot easier. Just make sure to warm the clay in your hands before you get started and make sure, you know, it's going to work well. Put it in your mold and then just work away the excess clay around the edges with your fingers. Just keep doing this until you've got it to where it is shaped like, you know, the design in the, in the mold. And then just fold it out and now we've got a beautiful embellishment. Just set these up, let these dry. Once they dry, you can paint them or you can, you know, distress them. I'm taking the, that rub and buff, it's already on my little sponge brush, and I'm just going over all these little clay molds I just made, and I'm just giving them a little bit of distressing, and this rub and buff works really great to distress these little clay molds. But I am just going to show you some different ways now of what we can do with these little mini canvases. So many things you can do with these once you get them made. You can put some magnets on the back of them just to adhere them with a little bit of hot glue. And now you can have fun just going around and just decorating them with the embellishments that you made. Now you can also, if you like to journal, you may have a lot of like little scrapbook uh, embellishments and things like that. Just get creative with your little mini canvases and decorate them any way you want to. And of course, you can always leave them blank. But these make great pieces that you can add to dough bowls. Since we added some magnets on it, you can, you know, definitely hang them up on something where they will stick. And like I say, adding those little extra embellishments to them just carried them to the next level. These were such fun and easy pro projects to make and something that I think you will enjoy doing during the winter months when we're stuck inside. But if y'all do make some, make sure to put them over on my Facebook page and also tag me over on Instagram because I'd love to see some that you made.
Now let's make another fun little heart project. All you're going to want to do is take a heart that you may have. This one come from Dollar General and it was $1. It's got two sides to it so you can use either side. I removed all the embellishments and the twine hanger and now we're ready to create something really pretty. I'm going to go with a piece of scrapbook paper. I went back and forth whether to use decoupage paper, but I had this beautiful piece of scrapbook paper I got at Hobby Lobby, and I got it for half off, so this was only 30 cents a sheet. I think it is absolutely beautiful, and especially for Valentine's Day. Then flip your scrapbook paper over, trace around your heart, and cut it out. I'm going to use a good quality glue stick to apply this, but you could also probably use Mod Podge. I just work in sections, I lather on the glue stick really well and make sure to, you know, press down the scrapbook paper really well just to make sure it adheres to your heart. And that's all you have to do. Then I'm going to go around the edges with a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to sand off any of the excess paper and then that, that way we have a smooth edge. Now this heart is done. Now let's make another heart to go with this one because we still have some scrapbook paper left over. I found this pack of these little wooden hearts at Goodwill for 99 cents. These make great project pieces. So I'm going to take one of these. I don't have to paint it because like I say, the scrapbook paper is thick enough so the background is not going to show through. So I just traced around my heart like I did the first one. You just want to cut it out. And again, using some school glue, I'm just going to apply this one to the little wooden heart. And now we've got our second heart made. Once I get this glued on, then I'm going to go around again with my sandpaper, remove any excess paper, and now we got this little heart made. So now I want to join the two hearts that I've just made together. I'm going to overlap them like this, and so I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue, glue them together, and then I'm going to add a bow as an embellishment, and then I'm also going to use a little clay mold that I made, and like in the previous project, I would distressed it a little bit with a little bit of rub and buff. I'm going to hot glue that on one of the hearts just to add a little bit more detail to them, and these little hearts are done. This right here made such a cute little project. You can also add a little hanger to these, hang these up, and you know, just embellish your home with these cute little hearts. Now for the next project, I'm going to use another heart that I have, and I think I got this at Goodwill, but I flipped it over to see where it was purchased, and it was it did come from Hobby Lobby. So if you want something like this, Hobby Lobby hopefully will carry this, you know, this year also. So I'm just going to paint the whole heart white. Once I got it painted, now I'm going to add a stencil. Now I'll have this stencil in my Amazon store. This is one of my favorite stencils. I've had it for a few years and I use it a lot. Now I'm just going to apply part of this stencil to the top of my heart using some black ink chalk paint. Now I'm going to apply this cute little stencil at the bottom. I love this little stencil and I'll have it linked down below, but it adds such a great detail to the bottom of the heart. It's just a little cherub angel with some little lace detail around the heart, so I think it's absolutely beautiful. I get her applied. I let everything dry really well. Then I'm going to go over and I'm going to sand over it with, very lightly with a sanding block just to make this look a little bit more worn into the heart. And then I'm going to go around the edges, distress the heart around the edges. I'm going to add a fabric bow and that's all we're going to do to this. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should Now 
Now I'm going to show you something else. It's really easy that you can add a little pop of color to the heart. Take some transfers that you may have. These are just some scraps that are left over from the IOD Christmas release from this year. Y'all, I don't like to store, you know, seasonal transfers because, you know, they, they have a risk of getting damaged. So these are just some pieces that I had left over, so I'm going to use them. I just decided, you know, to cut them up, and I just placed them on the heart around the edges, and I just went to town and just started applying them. So just get creative if you have scrap transfers laying around. Just cut them up, apply them to your projects, and, you know, it just adds another level of color and design to your project. So just wanted to give y'all some more ideas of how you can, you know, use those little scrap transfers and just really bump up your projects. Now let's take another little heart. Now I'm just going through my supplies and taking little hearts that I already have. This comes from the Target dollar spot and I think it was one dollar. It's got two sides to it and I actually think this was a Christmas ornament. But I'm just going to take that same little cute little cherub angel stencil. I placed it over my heart. The whole stencil didn't fit but I think it covered it really well so it worked. So this another little idea to use this cute little stencil. And like I say, I'll have this link down below. I just applied it using some black ink chalk paint, added a pink little ribbon to it. And now this makes a great little piece that we can add to our dough bowls, or you can put a hanger on it and hang it up. Another heart that I had in my supplies is another one that come from the Target dollar spot a couple of years ago. And it's got a chalkboard side and then it's got this side. This was a piece that was $3 and I'm just going to scrape off the sticker because I'm going to use this side. I'm also going to remove the twine hanger and I'm going to go over it with a piece of sandpaper and sand off that little sticky residue and also where I remove the staples. I want it to be a smooth surface. I'm just going to go over the whole heart using some white linen chalk paint and give it a good coat and cover it really well. Now once I get it all painted and it's dried, now I'm going to take this beautiful sheet of decoupage paper and I'll have it linked down below. But it, this is a really large sheet of decoupage paper so you can do several projects with this one piece. But I'm just going to apply it using my DIY liquid patina. I just lay the decoupage paper down and then roll over it with my brayer and this will smooth out a lot of your wrinkles and bubbles and it will also push a lot of that excess decoupage medium out to the edges. Once the decoupage paper was dry, I went around the edges and I sanded off the excess paper. Now I'm gonna add a Jamie Ray Vintage uh, stencil that I have and I'll have it linked down below but you get a whole pack of these. So, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of these stencils in the next project. But I applied that just to add a little detail to my heart. And then I added a little girl's little headband. If you're not good at making bows, I always pick up these little headbands because you can find them at the stores a lot of times in some beautiful colors. And they add great embellishments for your projects. Okay, this project, I'm going to show you how we can take some scrap wood pieces and these beautiful stencils. I'm going to have these linked down below, but look at all the different ones you get in this pack. Now, you can find scrap wood at the thrift store a lot of times. This I picked up for 79 cents, and somebody had 
hand painted a mermaid on that side but we can flip it over and look how beautiful this wood is i'm just going to take one of those transfers i'm going to apply it to this side and i'm going to use some white chalk paint for these and i just went over my scrap pieces of wood and like i say if you have scrap wood at home never throw that away because you can just take it and, and use it and make some really pretty little decor pieces out of it. I'm going to take this stencil and this is a piece of pallet wood. A lot of times Ben has a lot of pallets that he puts his firewood on and a lot of times some of it is you know just not good quality so he will cut those up for me and just make me some you know pieces of scrap wood out of it. I'm going to apply different ones using white chalk paint on all of them and I'm just going to go through and apply these different little French Valentine sayings. If y'all know what they say, <laughs> make sure to leave me a comment down below, but I'm sure it's something to do with love. Now I want to show you another idea and some more inspiration of how you can add some really beautiful detail to your scrap wood pieces once you get them stenciled. This is a transfer sheet, and I'm going to have one of these linked at my Amazon store that's very similar, but I love the pink florals, and I just kind of wanted to add a little bit of floral to one of these pieces of scrap wood just to give it a little bit of color. So on each end of the little scrap wood piece, I just went in, I cut out those, you know, transfers that I felt would fit the best, and I just applied those. Now, as you can see, I kind of transferred over part of my wording that I stenciled. I probably should have stenciled last, but that's an easy fix. Just lay your stencil back down and go back over that area, and it was an easy fix. So we've got this one done. I think this one turned out so pretty, and I love the floral detail we added to it. Now I'm going to make some little heart clay molds. This is an IOD um, mold. It's one of my favorites. It's got that little rabbit hair in it, but I use this one so many times. So if you don't have this mold, this is a good one to have because you get a lot of different shapes and ornate designs in this one. I made the large heart, the little medium, and the small. You just roll them out and let them dry. And then I'll just go through and I'll apply these to this. And this one will be done. So I'm just going to place them on the little scrap wood piece the way that I felt like, you know, it would they would go the best. And then I'm just going to use hot glue. But you can also use different kind of glues to apply your little clay molds once you get them get them done. But I usually use Elmer's wood glue a lot of times. It is a good hold for these clay molds also. But in this case, like I say, I'm just going to use hot glue to apply these. Now here is one that I made. This is the lock and key clay mold. I'm just going to apply it to this little scrap wood piece and making these little clay molds and letting these dry these make great little embellishments for your projects and then like i say i distressed some of them with the rub and buff this one i did not i just left it plain white this is how the clay will dry it is it comes out really white once it dries but you can definitely paint it if you would like to add a little bit more detail to it now I'm taking a dough bowl and I showed y'all how to make this dough bowl in my last video and I'll have that video linked at the end of this one and also in my description but I did not use any sandpaper to distress this bowl at all. I just took a wooden bowl that I found at the thrift store and I got this really cheapy rustic look to it and like I say I didn't use any sandpaper at all so make sure to check out that video and make yourself a dough bowl and then I just filled it with some little woven X's and O's that I got at Target a couple years ago and I added my little scrap wood pieces.
last week, I told y'all I'm starting off the year 2024, and I'm going to give y'all some more Bible verses in each video, and I asked last week for y'all to give me your favorite Bible verse, and I would try to pick some, and you know, from the comments, and I always include those in my videos, these two comments were right together, and they both said Psalm 4610 was their favorite verse. So that is the one that we're going to put in today's video. And I appreciate all of y'all for giving me your favorite verse because I read so many of them and I'm still reading them. So what great inspiration y'all are to me as well. So make sure to go over and connect with me over on all the social media. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure to hit that, that notification bell because y'all, I'll be putting up a new video on Sunday. So I hope to see y'all again on Sunday with some more DIYs. Thank you.